pilit kong inaano sa kanya na wala talagang kulang. Sabi ko sa kanya. You just looked at a clip of a film called Every Day After, and its director, Elisa Gambino, is with me right now to talk about this, this heartfelt film. It's a story of a brother and sister, Jari and Jessa. Elisa, welcome. Nice to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. This story, uh, in, I think as a journalist, you try not to gloss over things, but so often we get stories like this that are sort of glossy and happily ever after. Uh, you really got uh, into some really emotionally charged uh, moments there between the two of them. Tell me about that experience. Um, so I didn't want to tell a happily ever after story because anyone who has a facial difference will tell you that um, while it, you know people live fulfilling and beautiful and empowering lives, there's still a lot of stigma. And so I didn't want it to look like Jari gets his surgery and everything is... Uh, um, happy ever after. So um, what we wanted to do was tell an intimate story about how the love of one person can change how others view that person, can change uh, their ability to get health care, access to health care. So in our film, there's a sister who sees beyond Jari's, her brother's facial difference, and she puts uh, everything on the line to make sure that he gets the care that he needs. And I think sometimes we think one person can't make a difference, but uh, the film shows that one person can. And they and they live in uh, moderate, meager conditions in the Philippines, right? So it's not like you would have, you could run down to Cedar sinai Hospital and get great care. That's it's that's not the situation there. And for, for a young person like that, uh, it's difficult to receive that kind of care that you're talking about. It's very difficult. Um, so Jari lives, um, Jari and his sister live in a, in, a house, in a fragile house on a hillside outside of Manila, and they are from the province of Masbati. I think the Philippines has more than 7,000 islands, so access to health care is, uh, in some places, it's easy. If you're in a big city, it's there. If you're in a province, it, you may not be able to access it for geographical reasons and for a uh, lack of resources to get the health care. But um, Jari, he lives near Manila, and yet, and yet, it was still difficult uh, to, to find the free care that he needed. You're, you're a health journalist. You've covered, a, you've covered a lot of stories, and you've also done some documentaries on, on, on health care. It, it seems to me that we are in, in a world of so much information, I dare say misinformation as well, that it's hard to understand and believe a lot of the things that we hear. But this, you can actually see and feel and touch the experience. What should we take away from the film? We should take, a, my hope is that uh, viewers take away two things. One is that um, when we look at people differently, it can result in life changing, have a life changing impact positive and negative. So to, to understand that our actions individually can change the trajectory of someone's life is important. So that's one. The other is that I would really love for people to start looking at the narrative Hollywood films that we see where there are so many characters with facial differences. And by that, I mean scarring or cleft they are always almost universally portrayed as villains or wicked. Mm -hmm. For instance, the penguin. So Colin Farrell, the, there are videos on online that show the, the in, incredible makeup that was done. So when he portrays penguin in the Batman film, but to make him look scarred and with a cleft. And then the film teaches us that when people are rejected, they become evil. It's just, it needs to stop. There's no reason why why Penguin or Adrian and the mother needs to have facial differences. We, we don't have capacity anymore for tropes around women, for tropes around LGBTQ community, for tropes around people of color, for tropes around black people. The tropes around people with facial differences also need to stop. Now, you have a very interesting team with you. Uh, let's talk about Neil Brofman. Uh, he's he's your your partner in this and uh, uh, cinematographer. I take it. Tell me a little bit about him, and then David Liu, who's of course a friend of ours, who we met through Smile Train, who's involved in the film as well. 
Right. So Neil Brofman is my, uh, yes, my husband, and we've been working together for almost 30 years. We met at CNN. We met during the first Gulf War, um, and we started uh, this production company together 20 years ago. Neil films and he edited, he filmed um, the project and he edited it. So he's filming and editing in his head while he's going. The best um, kind of cinematographer who does that all at, all at once, right? <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's really wonderful. Yeah. And um, and the film was uh, shot in black and white because um, Neil grew up in his father's dark room. His father was a civil rights photographer and Neil uh, really um, I, is really moved by that kind of photography. And so he wanted to do that with this film. And also it, it creates a, a more intimate experience because your eye isn't going to a lot of the things that uh, it, you would not see like bright things. You, you feel like you're in there in Jari and Jess's house. Uh, with them. Uh, it was also film verite. We never, there's not a frame in the film where we directed or asked them to do anything. Um, so but I, you know, I love working with, you know, people. I love black that. and white. I love black yeah, and white. It's, it's a beautiful. great medium. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and David? Job. So Dave Liu is our um, executive producer. Dave is clef affected. Um, he's had many surgeries. He had one a few months ago. He's having another one, I think, in October. Um, he really sees this film as a way to tell a different story about people with facial differences. He hadn't really spoken about his health journey until this film came out. And now he's... Um, uh, such a supportive and uh, just amazing and enthusiastic ambassador for the film. And I'm so thankful for him. Yeah, he's a great guy. and He's done so much to really expose uh, how he feels personally about this. And 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 really, uh, this film is an absolute perfect extension of his personality and his desire to make sure that the right message and gets across. You know, I, I love this one uh, quote that you put on your website. It says, I keep telling him that even if he looks different from other kids, he is not missing anything. Something Jessa said to Jari. And uh, that kind of intimate moment is what really, I think, sells a film. It recently uh, premiered at Holly Shorts at the TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood. And what is it? What is the website? The website is everydayafterfilm.com. We're on Instagram and we're on Facebook as well. Elisa and, Gambino, the director of the film, thank you so much for being with us. It's been a pleasure and congratulations. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.